everyone, I'm Nan Scott. Welcome to nanscottdesignstudio.com and my series, World's Simplest Adobe Photoshop Elements Tutorials. This is tutorial number one, super simple Photoshop elements for the first timer. I'm glad you're here. Before we create our first project, it's important that you understand that Photoshop Elements works with layers. As you look at this digital layout, imagine you're creating a paper scrapbook page. You would have your background paper on the bottom and then layer your page elements, your photos, your headline, and your journaling on top. Your digital layout is basically the same. Over here is the layers palette. It's a list of all your page elements, such as your photos and your headlines. The top element in your layout is the top element of the layers palette. The bottom element on your layout is the bottom element on your layers palette and so forth. Within the palette, if you click and drag your element name, it will rearrange the page elements in your layout. For example, this ampersand is on the top, as you can see by how it moves on top of all the other page elements. If we click and drag that layer within the layers palette, so it goes under the photos, you'll see that it disappears under the photos. It is the bottom layer, just on top of the background. Now this concept becomes really important as you'll see. So let's go ahead and get started with our project. We've launched Photoshop Elements and PC users, you'll be asked whether you want to organize, edit, or create, and you'll select Edit. In the workspace, you'll see three tabs at the upper right make sure you've selected the Edit tab. Now let's take a look around the workspace. Along the left is the Tool panel with the Options bar along the top. As each tool is selected, the Options bar changes for that tool. There are just three essential tools for creating modern digital scrapbook pages. The Move tool, which looks like an X made from two arrows, the Marquee tool, which looks like a rectangle made with a dashed line, and the Type tool that looks like a capital T. You'll also want to go to Window, Undo History, to have your Undo History panel visible. This allows you to undo previous steps. Whether you change your mind or make a mistake is extremely helpful. Hopefully you've downloaded the Tutorial 1 project folder. Make sure you know where it is on your computer. We'll browse to it now. Going to your folder, let's open postcardtemplate.psd. PSD stands for Photoshop Document. Now because there's text on the template and your computer might not have that exact font, you may be asked whether you want the text updated or whether your computer should substitute a similar font. You can click OK. Now look at the layers panel. The template layers are written with simple directions. The layers on the template include a background, a photo shape, a placeholder for a page accessory, and text including journaling and a headline. Let's go to File, Save As, and save this as our project. I'm going to call it Postcard Project and it will automatically save as a PSD. I'm going to save that to the desktop. Let's place our photo. Go to File, Open, and browse to scooter.jpg. Now you're going to select your Move tool and click and drag this photo onto your project. And there it is. Now you see an additional layer in the Layers, panel, layers palette. You're going to drag that layer, your photo layer, so it's just on top of the layer that says Place Photo above this layer. Now you're ready to learn the simple action that will allow you to create modern digital scrapbook pages easily. I call it the magic click, and this is how you do it. 
on the layers palette, use your mouse to find the line between your photo and the photo layer, which is called Place Photo above this layer. There's the line right there. Now, on your keyboard, hold down the Option key, and those of you on PCs, you'll hold down the Alt key. You'll see that when you hover over that line, an icon will appear. It's an icon of some linked circles. When you see that icon, just click your mouse and your photo will be trimmed perfectly within the photo shape. Now notice that when you use your move tool, you can move the photo around within the photo shape. You can also resize it by clicking and dragging on a corner. Now when you do that, make sure that up here in the options bar constraint proportion is checked. That'll keep your photo from distorting. So let's move that photo around and resize it till it's just the way I like it. And when it is, I'm going to click this green check mark here in the corner. And we just confirmed the, the sizing and the placement. Now let's edit the text. Select the text tool and highlight the text much like you would in any other text editing program. Let's type the adventure begins. And just for fun, since this is a save the date postcard, let's type in save the date 8 16 10. Now, just like other text editing programs, you can change the font in the options bar up here. I'm going to cha change it to a font called Fling. And there it is. Let's go ahead and again select our, our text tool. And we're going to change the journaling. going to just leave this text in Century Gothic and so our text is done. Now it's time to add a little visual interest with a page accessory. This layer says replace with accessory number three. Now we aren't going to worry about leaving that. That's not what we want on our page. Instead we're going to go up and browse again to our folder and we're going to open the, f the file called scooter, or excuse me, the the file called symbols.png. A PNG has a transparent background indicated by the gray checkerboard. Anytime you see that gray checkerboard, it means that it is empty, that it's on a transparent background. We're going to go ahead and select the marquee tool, which I call my digital scissors. And on symbols PNG, we're going to click and drag to surround that exclamation point. And when we've released that, you'll see uh, a moving dashed line right around that exclamation point. We're going to select the Move tool and click and drag that exclamation point right over onto our layout. And there it is. It's a little big, so we're going to resize it. But I do like it placed right where uh, it's suggested. And we're going to go ahead and click that green check mark to confirm that. Now, we don't want that uh, original accessory layer there, so we go over to the Layers palette, and again it says Replace with Accessory. We're going to click the eye icon next to it to turn it off. Now that doesn't delete it, it just turns it off. And let's go ahead and close those right there. And there you have it. You've done it. You've created your first project. Let's go ahead and save it. and then we're also going to save it as a JPEG. A JPEG is what you'll need to save if you're going to print it or share it online. I always save at the maximum quality 
and on a PC, you'll be asked whether you want to save your JPEG as a version of your original PSD document, and you'll want to answer yes. That's it. You did it. You did your first project, and you did great. Now you're ready to learn how to create modern digital scrapbook pages, so I will see you in tutorial number two, Essential Actions for Creating Modern Digital Scrapbook Pages and Quick Pages. I'll see you there.